Playing quarterback for Cliff Kingsbury is incredibly difficult. He has an unhealthy obsession with curl routes, primarily uses slow developing isolated route combinations, and doesn't make his quarterback's life easier in any other way beyond using screen passes. His offense is predictable, far too simplistic, and just generally designed to beat itself. The recent rut the commander's offense has fallen into is primarily a result of Kingsbury's scheme narrowing the margin for error for all of the commander's players on offense. So keep in mind, everything that Jaden Daniels is doing this season is framed by the fact that he's largely anchored down by his offensive coordinator, not set up for success by the offense around him. In other words, he's got to carry the offense and elevate the coaching staff. He's a rookie, he's not supposed to be doing that. Nothing about this play is particularly complicated. It's first and 10, the Giants are playing cover 4 and Washington are using 3 vertical isolated routes with a check down running into either flat. Jaden Daniels is about to throw the ball, but probably not to where you think. The receiver who looks most open is the seam route bending towards the middle of the field, but to make that throw, the ball would already need to be out of Daniels' hand. The safety will break on it at the catch point otherwise. Daniels is instead looking left. Terry McLaurin is stopping his feet and Daniels is winding up the throw. The cornerback covering McLaurin is about to break on the curl route and either intercept or knock the ball away. But while Daniels perfectly timed his throwing motion to sell the curl route, this was actually a double move into a fade route. Daniels still has to hit a minuscule window between the defender and the sideline. His timing gave the cornerback no time to recover, affording McLaurin the opportunity at an uncontested catch. Just like the Giants, the Baltimore Ravens are going to show cover 4 here as well. Daniels has another deep curl route to the bottom of the screen. At the snap, the defense rotates into a single high look, meaning the cornerback to the bottom of the screen plays aggressive man coverage. The Ravens are actually mixing man and zone coverages. Zones to the top of the screen and man to the bottom. Daniels is at the top of his drop here and looking in the direction of his curl route. His timing is the exact same as it was for the previous play. The quarterback is releasing the ball before his receiver has entered his break. He doesn't need to see his receiver come open before beginning his throwing motion. This is what effective anticipation looks like. And to cap it off, he perfectly places the ball low and outside so it's away from the tight coverage. He gives his receiver the best possible opportunity to make the play on the ball without any defender interference. It's a phenomenal throw, and actually a very difficult play even though it doesn't make anyone's highlight reel. Daniels combines a rare level of precision, intelligence and timing as a passer that makes him almost unstoppable from clean pockets. The Buffalo Bills are going to play cover 3 here. Daniels hits the top of his drop and his eyes go straight to the deep safety. Daniels is fully focus on that defender because he has a crossing route running beneath him and a seam route running deep in behind. Daniels will decide what receiver to throw to depending on where the safety goes. As soon as that safety turns to cover the deep route, Daniels begins his throwing motion to hit the crossing route. But there's one problem. The linebacker underneath has played this brilliantly. He's turned out of his underneath zone so that he can run underneath the crossing route. Daniels can't throw the ball to his receiver directly now, but he understands that the safety and the cornerback to that side will vacate the space chasing the deep route. Not only does he purposely push the ball upfield to lead his receiver away from the linebacker, he also puts the ball on the receiver's back shoulder so that the other cornerback recovering from his underneath zone isn't a factor at the catch point. Daniels both protected his receiver and maximised the opportunity for a reception by making this throw the way that he did. And while he had a clean pocket long enough to let the routes develop downfield, he did have to deal with an edge rusher arriving to him just as he released the ball. His quick release aided him in getting the ball out unabated. When Washington needed a touchdown drive late on against the Cowboys this past weekend, Daniels produced a variety of outstanding plays to pull them back into the game. This one stood out in particular because it's second and 16 and he wins with an outrageously early anticipation throw. It's one of Kingsbury's better play calls too as he has a defined plan and a clear purpose to attack the middle of the field. The two drag routes are there to occupy the underneath linebackers, preventing them from dropping deep into the passing lane behind them. The seam route vertical pulls the safety away, clearing space over the middle for the dig route at the first down line. Daniels' eyes go to the safety at the top of the screen immediately. If that safety stays inside or steps forward, Daniels can immediately fire deep for the seam route in the end zone. When the safety turns with his vertical route, Daniels knows he can look for the dig route instead. The safety made Daniels read easy by turning so early and committing to the vertical. He had to do that out of fear of being beaten deep. This is the point when Daniels begins his throwing motion. His receiver is only entering his break in his route, but Daniels is also not throwing to him at the point where he comes out of his route. Instead, this is the point on the field where Daniels is actually throwing to, and he's releasing the ball so early that the safety on the opposite side of the field thinks he's throwing to the tight end underneath. The dig route isn't even on that safety's radar yet. Daniels' throw is high, but Diami Brown can make the play because the safety isn't there to take him out. That's a byproduct of Daniels' timing. He widened the window a 
maximise the receiver's chances at making the play. The slight inaccuracy he has is a trade off for such an early release and not being able to watch his receiver come open first. If we go back to the Ravens game, we get an even more impressive example of the high level of quarterback play that Daniels has already reached. It's 3rd and 10. Commanders have a triple bunch on the left side who are going to attack the defence together. Daniels reaches the top of his drop but immediately has pressure bearing down on him. He's beginning his throwing motion at this point, but there's nobody open. Nobody is even close to coming open. This is the receiver who Daniels is going to throw to. The spot Daniels is throwing to is on the other side of the defender covering him though. Somehow, Daniels envisions the development of the play and perfectly places the ball just out of the reach of Roquan's Smith so that it hits his receiver in stride. The timing and precision is off the charts. From the end zone angle, we can see just how much pressure Daniels was under, and just how small of a window he was throwing into. He got the first down, but the throw deserved the touchdown too. Against the Cardinals in Arizona, Daniels faces a 3rd and 13 that comes with a similar degree of difficulty. Not that there is a good play design for 3rd and 13, but Cliff Kingsbury calls a basic route combination with 3 receivers running post routes, and 2 more releasing into shallower routes to the opposite side of the field. The Cardinals are playing a mixture of coverages. These 3 defenders are playing man, while the rest of the back 7 execute matchup zones. Not surprisingly, Daniels has nowhere to go with the ball when he hits the top of his drop. His eyes are on the middle of the field, where he has his crossing route working underneath the three post routes. At the same time, the stunt working against the right side of his pass protection is winning. Daniels will have a moment at the top of his drop, but not much more than that. He uses that moment to turn his eyes with the underneath crossing route. That pulls the safety from the other side of the field and holds the linebacker in the middle of the field. Chris Barnes is that linebacker, number 51. He's the only one left who could account for Noah Brown's post route. But Daniels doesn't have time to turn and throw at the top of his drop because of the arriving stunt defenders from his right side. Daniels moves off the top of his spot to give himself the opportunity to throw up the first down line with a perfect pass. He needed his acumen and athleticism to make this play work. His composure allowed him to remain calm and adjust at the top of his drop instead of rushing the throw. The Cleveland Browns are going to take a different approach on this third and 13, but Daniels is ultimately going to make a better version of the previous play. The Browns blitz is successful. They create a free pad for their linebacker to Daniels as soon as he hits the top of his drop. Daniels doesn't wait around to be taken down, he's proactive in his reaction, moving off the top of his drop almost as soon as he arrived there. The quarterback does an incredible job of escaping both defenders before bringing his eyes back up to look for a receiver downfield. From there, he unleashes an unbelievable throw to Terry McLaurin on the move for a 60 plus yard gain. A great tackle from the defensive back prevented this play from resulting in a touchdown. Daniels connection with McLaurin is sensational. They have an innate understanding of each other since they are both executing their positions at elite levels. On this play, the Pittsburgh Steelers will send the same cover one blitz after Daniels as the Browns did, but on this occasion, Daniels isn't going to move to beat it. Elandon Roberts, number 50, is straight through to Daniels. It's instant, unblocked pressure up the middle. Daniels never looks at the blitz. His eyes are on the slot fade out on the wide side of the field. Roberts gets a clean hit to the chest of Daniels just as the ball leaves his hand, but it doesn't impact the throw at all. You can't throw this ball any better. McLaurin makes a spectacular catch, but that's only possible because Daniels perfectly places, perfectly flies and perfectly times the deep ball to him. That throw was almost as good as this one against the Cincinnati Bengals. It's 3rd and 7 with 2 minutes remaining. The commanders need to score to secure their victory. The Bengals go one step further than previous teams here, using a cover 0 blitz instead of a cover 1 blitz. Daniels knows he's being hit before the play even begins. Despite that, his process is smooth. He didn't catch and release the ball instantly the way the defence wanted him to. He held the ball for a moment, just long enough to let McLaurin's route develop outside. That delay gave the defender the opportunity to blow up Daniels in his chest immediately after the ball left his hand. But Daniels perfectly synchronised the start of his throwing motion with the break in McLaurin's route, stopping the defensive back covering him for the split second that the commanders needed to open the window in behind him. You don't expect the quarterback to make this throw from a clean pocket. Daniels getting clobbered as heavily as he does after letting the ball go should have led to some breakdown in his process and a missed throw, but it didn't. He stood in strong, tall and delivered a strike to win his team the game. In that same game against the Bengals, Daniels hits a deep ball that showcases arm talent and precision as a vertical passer. He was a great deep passer in college, but playing with Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. allowed too many to discredit him. It doesn't matter who the receiver is on this play, no quarterback can fake this kind of arm talent. Cliff Kingsbury calls a fairly simple shot play. He has a dig route with a seam vertical on opposite sides of the field, while two of his tight ends chip block before releasing into either flat. The defense is playing cover 4, so in theory, they match up perfectly to this play call. They can bracket both vertical receivers while sitting on all three underneath routes with their linebackers. When the play begins, Daniels takes a very deep drop. He's extending the distance he has to throw the ball by setting up initially so far 
far behind the line of scrimmage. At the same time, McLaurin has turned the corner back around with his route outside while the safety is already looking to run over the top of him. The defence isn't in a bad spot here at all. The safety should theoretically take McLaurin's deep route away, but Daniels negates the safety starting position with a monster of a throw. He lets the ball go from his own 33 yard line and hits McLaurin in behind the coverage at the opposition 10. That's 57 yards before you extend it to account for the angle. McLaurin had the speed to get to it and the ball never lost an ounce of velocity on its way to him. McLaurin is a superstar wide receiver in the NFL just like how Neighbours was a superstar wide receiver in college, so his acceleration definitely helped here. But there was no other way of completing a deep ball on this play. You needed the quarterback to make an incredibly high degree of difficulty pass. Getting the most out of a superstar receiver is a talent in itself. McLaurin is unleashed by another mammoth deep ball from Daniels again on this play against the Chicago Bears. The commanders have three vertical routes and two checkdowns again. The Bears are showing cover four, but they're going to rotate out of that at the snap. By the time Daniels hits the top of his drop, the defense has blitzed the fifth defender and rotated the safety down on the narrow side of the field. It's now a cover tree look on the back end, creating a lot of space in behind the cornerback on McLaurin's side of the field. Daniels recognised the shift instantly, so he's releasing the ball before McLaurin is even level with the cornerback and before the safety in the middle of the field can try to cover across. Releasing the ball at this point minimises the recovery time that the cornerback has and also negates any pressure the blitz might create. It's another 50 plus yard throw from Daniels that hits McLaurin in stride. The receiver should have had a touchdown, but he's again stopped by a phenomenal desperation tackle from the chasing cornerback. McLaurin did reach the end zone from the most unlikely of positions this past weekend against the Cowboys. Whenever a team scores an 86 yard touchdown against a prevent defence, the primary story of the play is on the defensive side. You have to mess up big to give up a touchdown in that scenario. But this play comes about as close as one can to being about the offence. This is not a fluke. Daniels throws a phenomenal touch throw into a tiny window and McLaurin complements it by running through the ball towards the middle of the field instead of upfield so that he can beat the outside cornerback. From there, his acceleration just leaves the rest of the defence in his wake. McLaurin's throw is so impressive because the outside cornerback isn't really in a bad position. The ball placement, velocity and trajectory just takes him out of the play. Diami Brown isn't a superstar receiver in the NFL like McLaurin is, but he's going to catch this deep ball from Daniels in the end zone. The Browns defence shows cover one before the snap and will play cover one after the snap. Brown is running a sideline route in the narrow side of the field. Throughout his drop back and for a moment to the top of his drop, Daniel's eyes are trained on the safety in the middle of the field. He successfully holds the safety long enough to remove him from the equation at the catch point, and the throw is pinpoint perfect for Brown in the end zone. You can't do it any better than that. If you don't pressure Daniels, he's going to put up huge numbers, but pressuring him is more difficult than simply beating his offensive line. Daniels is so advanced that his process is already so quick that defences can't keep up with him, never mind get ahead of him to pressure him. This play is a great example of how tight and precise his process within the pocket is. The Giants are blitzing the near side cornerback on first and 10. In behind the blitz, they have a mixture of man and zone coverages again. Daniels executes the play fake quickly and looks for his tight end slant route. He's not open because the linebacker is floating underneath any routes that will break to the inside from Daniels' right. Daniels needs to hold that linebacker. He does so with a very quick pump fake, which stops the linebacker and makes him take a step backwards rather than across. That timing opens up the window to the receiver outside, but it also gives the edge rusher the chance to hit Daniels from behind. This is where Daniels' lightning quick and tight release comes into play. He beats the pass rusher to get the ball out and connects with his receiver for the first down. He didn't hit his receiver in stride because of how quickly he had to work to get the ball out before the pressure arrived, but he still got the first down. Against the Cardinals, Daniels has an isolated out route to the top of the screen on 1st and 10. The Cardinals are only rushing 3, so they can crowd the coverage in behind. Part of that crowd is the outside linebacker dropping deep so that the out route will be bracketed underneath and above. Daniels doesn't waste any time after hitting the top of his drop. He's releasing the ball before his receiver has come out of his break, so the cornerback over the top passes back to the sideline still, and the undercutting defender hasn't gotten deep enough yet. The timing of the throw along with the precision of the pass combined to turn a tight window throw into what could easily be mistaken for a routine completion. Daniels can recognise that instantly at the snap, but he can also show patience in the pocket when needed. The Bengals are dropping into cover 3 here. Daniels eyes go to the deep safety as soon as he catches the ball. He's confirming the coverage to himself, so he knows his deep route over the middle isn't an option straight away. Once he hits the top of his drop, his eyes go right to his curl route. That receiver has settled between the linebacker and the cornerback, so Daniels holds the ball. But critically, while Daniels is looking right, the backside of the coverage is changing. 
The linebacker on the opposite side of the field is following his eyes towards the front side curl route receiver. The cornerback outside of him is stepping forward to take the flat route. A soft spot is developing between them. Daniels times his read to turn around and hit that throw before the linebacker can redirect. The end zone angle gives us a full run through of Daniels process in the pocket and how he broke the defense down step by step. There's a rare maturity in Daniels game. This second and 10 play shows it off as he adjusts to the pressure in the pocket before it can get to him and then instead of rashly furring deep for his downfield receiver who has a chance of being open, he takes a higher percentage play to his 5 yard check down to set up 3rd and 5. That's keeping the offense on schedule with the down and distance. From the end zone angle, we can see how Daniels adjusted to the pressure but it also reveals the ball placement at the catch point. Daniels protected the ball and his tight end by putting it low and on his back hip, away from the arriving linebacker over the top. When the downfield throw is the right option, he'll take that too. Daniels makes a similar adjustment in the pocket on this play against the Ravens. It's another cover one blitz, but this time it's even more aggressive because of how the Ravens line up everyone on the line of scrimmage. Daniels knows before the ball is snapped that he might have to act quickly. The Ravens get a linebacker in a one-on-one -on -one matchup in space against the commander's running back. Daniels moves before his back is beaten instead of waiting at the top of his drop. That sidestep gave Zacherts just enough time to run through the break of his route and enough time for the clear out route to create space in front of him. Daniels delivers the throw and the commanders are on the march towards the end zone again despite their failed pass protection. Daniels was proactive in escaping that pressure. Here's a play where he's being reactive and uses his legs to escape the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's second and ten. The Steelers are going to send six rushers after the quarterback. Washington actually are assignment sound and pick up every blitzer that comes but they're all conceding ground rapidly and Daniels has no open receiver to release the ball to. He took a deep drop, so he could step up into the pocket, but that would likely just see him engulfed by all the bodies being pushed back into him. Instead, he shows off his athleticism and gains further depth to escape into the right flat. From there, he makes a sublime throw to the first downline for the big conversion. Noah Brown compliments the throw with a beautiful toe-tapping catch as he falls out of bounds. Daniels' athleticism has proven to be incredibly valuable against aggressive defences. This is third and two against the Bengals. The defensive end stumbles as he comes off the edge, but he's left unaccounted for after that. He has an angle on Daniels at the top of his drop. Daniels abandons his drop before reaching that point, then showing off his acceleration before connecting with his receiver for the first down. In that same game, Daniels converted a 4 and 2 by hitting a crossing route from the pocket, and he converted a 4 and 5 by leading Zach Ertz back to the ball against the Blitz. What do you do with a quarterback who is so adept inside and outside of the pocket as a passer? There's not a lot you can do, really. And of course, that's before we get to the scrambling. Daniels is a quarterback who is good enough to win games without moving off the top of his spot. If he had to play like Philip Rivers, he could do it. But he doesn't need to do that. Instead, he makes plays like these. The Buccaneers have Daniels dead to rights with an unblocked blitzer coming from the second level. Daniels sells the front side run before instantly reversing his momentum to escape around his left tackle for the first down. Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa blitzes from a wide starting spot for the Browns on this play. He has all the leverage he should need to contain Daniels. Furthermore, Daniels is looking left so the defender is coming from his blind spot during the quarterback's drop back. Yet, with both of those advantages, Daniels still uses the defender's momentum against him to evade him in the backfield, then continue down field for a huge gain. It's not just about escaping sacks, Daniels also has more options when the defense drops into coverage. This is 3rd and 13 against the New York Giants. The Giants just want the commanders to punt. They drop every single defender in coverage to the first down line or deeper. The expectation is that Daniels will take the check down to give his punter some space away from the end zone. Daniels is looking in the direction of his check down, but he also has a lane to escape the pocket through. Instead of the 10 yard check down, Daniels uses his speed and elusiveness to run for 14 yards and the first down. These are the kinds of plays he's been making all season long. CJ Stroud had probably the best rookie season that any quarterback has had since Andrew Luck, and yet, somehow, just one year later, we have a quarterback who has not only surpassed Stroud, but gone way beyond just surpassing him. Daniels is arguably already the third best quarterback in the NFL behind Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. That's how good he's been.